What is happening, everyone? Welcome back to G-Ball Vision. Tonight, we're going to have a little discussion on are there folding knives created for hard use or are all knives created to be just day-to-day -day slicers? And I want to kick things off with this TRM Atom right here. And keep in mind, these are my opinions, uh, my evaluations of things. And so you can feel free to let me know if you agree or disagree down in the comments. I love hearing from you guys whether we do agree or we don't. Uh, I love hearing everyone's opinion about the topics, about the knives. So feel free to let me know uh, what you think down there. So we have the TRM Atom, USA made, brilliantly done and finished. Everything is to spec, the 20CV here. Everything is very well finished. You have a drop point blade. You have a DLC coating, all titanium hardware, handle, pocket clip, inset titanium liner lock, on washers. This is a great knife. This isn't a hard use knife though. This is a thin, thinly ground 20 CV blade, which means with 20 CV, you have edge retention here. Uh, you have corrosion resistance here, but not really a lot of toughness per se, especially with the way this is thin down and very thin behind the edge. And that's not a knock on this knife. This knife was designed to be a poking and slicing knife. That's what this was designed for. Lighter duty task, but being able to do those lighter duties very efficiently and for a long period of time. So that is kind of the TRM Atom in a nutshell. This isn't something I would take out and beat on, you know, and there's a reason for that. It's because it's not made for that. Uh, it's very thin, very slicey. This is a, a thin knife all the way around. Uh, you know, you get a good grip, but it's not a substantial handle to the point where, you know, you can get a substantial grip. This is more of, you know, it's comfortable. Uh, I can definitely hang on to it and do most tasks with this knife. So that's the TRM Atom. Next up, we have the Cold Steel 8010, or the light here in this particular version. We do have the drop point as well. Let's wipe this satin blade off here. So we have the Cold Steel 8010 light, and we also have its bigger brother, the 8010 the regular one in the drop point. So the 8010 series of knives is an overbuilt, rugged design that is not only going to be able to handle day-to-day -day tasks, but these knives are going to be able to handle a significant amount more stress every which way, every direction, than something like the TRM Atom here. I mean, the 8010, both of them would just engulf this knife uh, in its size. So in the light version, we have Aus 10A, which is not a super steel by any means, right? But it is a decent steel, especially if heat treated properly. And you can say that about, you know, a lot of steels. But Aus 10 is pretty damn tough. It's pretty corrosion resistant. The edge retention isn't the best. And the same can be said about S35. It's pretty damn tough. It's pretty corrosion resistant. Uh, and the edge retention isn't nothing to scoff at, really. Uh, 20 CV is a touch better, you know, on, a, on the... the the scales, the charts, it's a little bit better. But uh, these are both steels that are very tough, very corrosion resistant. And what these knives also include with their steel is, especially with the light model, 
a very thick blade stock all the way to the tip. More so with the Tanto, but the 8010 regular version as well. And you have a, they're not extremely thick behind the edge, but they are pretty damn thick. And the Tanto is even a touch thicker than the original 8010. You have oversized thumb studs, temple thumb studs. And then you have G10 here where this is an FRN. Kind of, I mean, you can tell a difference, but they both feel relatively the same. The 8010 light is considerably cheaper uh, more often than not. Then you have this heavy duty rugged clip back here made out of steel, lower mounted uh, for ease of getting in and out of the pocket. You have this big pummel back here on the very butt end of the knife and then to top this knife off you have the tried and true triad lock here which is a back lock on steroids not only do you have the back lock but you have stop pins and this thing is overbuilt to a t i mean it's insanely overbuilt uh i have done some questionable things with this one and i wanted to quit doing that with this one and start doing it with the lighter model uh it's got the tanto blade it's very low you know for most tantos it comes down nice and low almost even with the pivot just just a little higher but still very usable and both edges are great for hard using. Not only are you still going to be able to poke with this thing, but you're going to get and be able to do a fair amount of longer slicing. But with this blade stock and the design of this blade shape here, the design of the drop point, these are built to be beat on and beat on and beat on. That triad lock is, I believe, still to this day, you know, the most resistant to uh, lock failures than anything else. Uh, the compression lock is probably gaining ground, but I don't, it's not, I don't think. Uh, you'd have to basically bust the stop pin in this knife or snap the blade before this lock will fail. And my guess is the blade would snap depending on, you know, in what direction and how. Uh, up and down, it's not going to happen. Side to side, you know, the blade will snap before this lock will fail. And this blade will snap out of here before that stop pin and this lock fail as well. So... Uh, this lock is very, very strong. A liner lock, especially like what's on the Atom here, is not going to be able to withstand a majority of what this knife can. And there's a reason for that. These are hard-use knives right here. The 8010 Lite and the 8010 were created to be hard-use knives. These were not created to be slicers. These were not created to be razor blades. These knives and these triad locks have underwent probably the most extensive testing when it comes to locks that there's ever been. Uh, I don't know if a lock's been tested more than the triad lock here. And it is reliable. It is extremely resilient. A liner lock is a good lock, but it's a good lock when it comes to a light duty uh, slicing style of knife. And that's, you know, what the lock was mainly designed for, kind of day-to-day -day tasks. This lock was designed for you to be able to hammer this into a tree then use the claws of the hammer and jiggle it out, you know. That's what these 
are built for. Things like that. They're not meant to be slicers. So that's going back and answering the question initially, are there hard use knives? Are there folding knives created to be hard use? Yes. And I went to extremes here, but I could bring out some other knives that, you know, don't necessarily completely fill the category of hard use like a cold steel, like an AD-10 does. But how about this hinderer, this ZT-0562? Is this meant to be a razor blade, a thin slicer? No, it is not. It is meant to be hard used and it is meant to take that kind of use. That's the idea behind the design. That is what Hinderer had in mind. This was originally designed for firefighters and all the situations that they could encounter. Hence the little bit thicker of a blade stock, a little bit thicker behind the edge, the overbuilt thick slabs of titanium here, the frame lock, uh, if done properly, can be very strong. Uh, you know, not near as strong as the triad lock, but that's why the ZT0562 was created, which was for hard use. And you might be asking, why are we even talking about this? And it's going back to locks failing. That's what it's going back to. You say that a knife shouldn't be used in a certain way. But there are knives designed exactly what you're saying they're not designed for. Not every knife out there is a thin utility razor blade like the Atom, like the Neutron. There are hard use knives. There are knives that are meant to take abuse. Knives are meant to be able to take some abuse. Whether it's a triad lock or a liner lock, they are met with force they are met with circumstances that they need to hold up in and are responsible as a locking knife to do so. If you're trying to make this argument for a slip joint of some kind, then that's a, that's a really stupid argument, you know. A slip joint is a non-locking knife and is, of course, meant for very light, lighter tasks, day-to-day -day type tasks. But it's when they came out with locking knives that in that locking mechanism, they had in mind, hey, we can use these a little harder than we could grandpa's slip joint or dad's slip joint, right? That's why the lock was created, to hold that blade open. Now, of course, if I put this on the table and clamp the blade down and then smack it with a hammer, I don't expect that this knife to get through that. But what I also don't expect is to be able to tap on this knife and the blade just comes swinging closed tapping on the spine of the knife or coming up and hitting the spine of the knife on something fairly lightly, light to medium, uh, the knife should not be closing. There, that's just a fact of the matter. Whether it's light duty or heavy duty, it doesn't matter. But then when you move into overbuilt knives with very thick frame locks and knives of that same magnitude, there is no way in hell they are supposed to fail because they are designed and built to take on that kind of hard use. That's what the designer had in mind. That's what the OEM or the company 
took on in the project. So when this frame lock fails here on this ZT, they didn't, they, ZT didn't do their job because that's not what the designer had in mind. He didn't want a pretty looking knife that uh, just cut things, you know, and was a very light duty user. He wanted firemen to be able to depend on this knife. Now, yes, the argument can be made when you're squeezing on this, uh, you're really pushing that lock over or holding it there, and within that, the blade is not going to fail. Uh, and, you know, I can get on board with that a little bit, but not in all cases. Am I standing here, you know, when I'm using this knife, squeezing the piss out of it? Typically, you have a casual grip on the knife and you are making your cut. And, you know, if you come up into something that's just above what you're cutting or whatever the circumstance is, it's hard to duplicate something that happens on accident. But I've tested it and with a casual grip, even a slight squeeze, certain knives will still fail. And if this knife right here is failing a test like that, there is a huge issue because this is a hard use knife built to be hard used. And you have a, you know, simple tap on the spine and the blade swinging shut. So that's an issue. And the other issue is people thinking knives, only fixed blades are meant for hard use. There are knives out there that are folders that are meant to have the piss beat out of them and continue trucking along with no incidents. Let me know what you think down in the comments. I love hearing from you guys. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. If you're new to the channel or you've been here before and you're not subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button down below the video. I would love to have you here. I'm going to throw up three new videos. Go watch one of them. And I'll catch you on the next one.